I don't like to do this usually, but with Split, I'll be talking about spoilers! Spoilers! Lots and lots of spoilers! What's up all my YouTube buddies? It's me, Jacob, with another YouTube video. A movie review for you tonight. And I'm talking about Split. Another release from M. Night Shyamalan in preparation for Glass. I won't, like I said at the beginning of the video, there will be a lot of spoilers on this thing. Actually, I will be doing spoilers off the bat, mainly because the twist ending has something to do with Glass. Are you ready for? If you hadn't seen Split, don't watch this video. Okay? Okay? Are you leaving? Come back and come back and watch the video after you see this movie. It's really good. So Split shares the exact same universe as Unbreakable. Wow, I actually gave away the twist. I know this movie's been a couple years old already, but man, that feels good. So it's funny. So I got I got to tell the story off the bat. So I saw Split in theaters opening weekend. Uh, me and my sister uh, expecting to see a good movie, especially since this was considered to be M Night Shyamalan's return to form, which it is. So we saw the movie, we got into it, I actually really got into the film, I was a little uh, put off by some of the choices they made in the last third, especially when James McAvoy turns into uh, this character called the Beast. <laughs> like, where is this going? There's got to be something to this. And then that final scene comes... And you get Bruce Willis making that cameo at the end as David Dunn. And that's why I'm like, whoa, you did that. You really did that. You, you connected one of your movies with one of your other movies. And this was at the time, at the time I didn't like Unbreakable. If you saw my Unbreakable video, you know I was disappointed in that film originally. So I was just shocked. I was like, whoa, wow, wow. <laughs> After seeing Split in theaters, I'm like, yep, I gotta rewatch Unbreakable because I might get a better appreciation for that film. And, if you saw that recent video where I reviewed Unbreakable, you know it is now my favorite at night. Shyamalan film. So let's talk about Split, now that I've spoiled the twist ending. So Split, on the surface, is a horror thriller, uh, which is in Night Shyamalan at some of his absolute best. I mean, he got his big break doing horror thriller with The Sixth Sense, which is a movie I still really, really like. Uh, this one stars uh, James McAvoy. He plays a guy named Kevin. Kevin is interesting in the fact that he has 23 different personalities because he suffers from multiple personality disorder. And so in this state, he kidnaps three teenage girls, one of which is played by Anya Taylor-Joy. And... You don't know what he's going to do, but you know something sinister is about to happen. Obviously, spoilers, because <laughs> I did, I revealed that at the beginning. So on the surface, you think this is a horror film, because, you know, he's talking about the beast, and he's feeding these women to this, cre this creature, which is uh, the hidden personality in uh, Kevin. And you're like, oh, this is just going to be a, just a scary horror film and no more, no less. But then when you get to that twist ending, you realize uh, because the beast has superhuman abilities because you see him climb through walls and you see him bend bars and crazy stuff like that, you realize this is a supervillain origin story. 
uh, when you make the connections to Unbreakable. And then you see more of the Unbreakable connections, especially when you see the film on a rewatch. Uh, one character mentions that Kevin's dad was killed on a train. Obviously, if you've seen this video, you've seen Unbreakable. And you know in Unbreakable, a uh, train derails, killing hundreds of people. That was an incident mastermind by Samuel Jackson's character, Elijah Price, or Mr. Glass. So, in a sense, Mr. Glass created two superhuman characters, David Dunn and unofficially Kevin Wendell Crumb. And I think that's just kind of neat how M. Night sprinkles and foreshadows things before he wants you before he wants to reveal his dark secrets. I mean, even the even the cover of this thing, you see like all the shattered glass and stuff, it's it's very much like the unbreakable cover. It's really crazy how he gets away with this and he still fools us. It's brilliant. It's crazy. But even before the twist, Split is still in the great movie. And a lot of that, there's a lot of reasons why I love this movie. Uh, one is James McAvoy. He is crazy good playing this character. Actually, multiple personalities in one character. I've, I, I, I'll be honest, I don't know anybody actually with uh, the disorder. I know it's, I guess, hard to live with people like that and I know it's sad because usually those emotions are triggered by something traumatic so James McAvoy had to, to had to uh, he had to convey three things to make his performance work one he has to be creepy since he's playing a psychopath who wants to harm innocent women two you have to feel for him because you know Something bad happened to him as a child. We find out, obviously, spoilers. Uh, his dad died in the East Rail 177 incident, and his mother was very abusive towards him. And that's what caused all these memories. Three, you have to pity for him because these terrible things happened to him. So you understand how he got to be in this state but you're also horrified and disgusted by his actions. And McAvoy does a brilliant job of doing one personality to another personality within the same scene, and it works. He can go from, you know, the creepy, sadistic guy who wants to do harm, and then he turns into this nine-year-old kid personality who just wants to have fun. It's, it's really crazy uh, what he does. Uh... Definitely a highlight of the film. Also, Anya Taylor-Joy is really good. Uh, for, and she has a character arc of her own. And of course, the main focus is on Kevin, but of the three connect women, she's the one that has you know, the most backstory to her because it leads into the other twist. Uh, you know, we find out you know, at the end, obviously this is a spoiler video, that Kevin only harms people that he considers impure. People that get away in life too easily and have everything handed to them on a silver platter. Uh, the other two girls, which I get it, they're fine actresses and they do the best at what they're given, but you don't really get much out of them. But when you find out the twist, you can understand why. Because they're supposed to have an easy life. They don't have real problems. They're, they pretty much have first world problems in a sense. And Anya Taylor Joy's character is in the pure line because, like Kevin, she has a lot of pain in her. Uh, we see through flashbacks that she was sexually molested as a child by her uncle. And that's why, and she's been in so many lousy situations uh, since childhood because of that. So by the end of 
this journey she's on, you don't know which situation is scarier. Hanging out locked in a basement with a, with a psycho with multiple personality disorder or living with your creepy uncle that wants to sexually molest you. Yeah, definitely a tricky situation. And she does a great job with it. Uh, I like the character's progression and uh, where she goes throughout the story. Uh, she gives a good performance considering she mostly does a lot of blank stares, but again, that's part of the character. She goes through a lot of pain. So it does work. Uh, Split was considered in Night Shyamalan's return to form after his string of critically panned films, you know, Lady in the Water and The Happening, The Last Airbender, After Earth. And yeah, you can definitely see that. His directing is top notch. You get that old school tension. You, his uh, biggest influence comes back to mind. You know, Alfred Hitchcock. You have there's that genuine tension and suspense that just drives the movie. And then just the, the unique camera angles he decides to uh, to shoot in some of these situations is just really phenomenal. It's some great filmmaking as all. But I don't know about it as always, but when he does his best work. And like I said, the script is very, very unpredictable. When I first saw the film, I didn't know where it was going to go. I, I thought the film would derail in the last third when McAvoy becomes the beast. But then when they make the unbreakable connection and we find that it's a supervillain origin story leading up to something bigger, the more I realize I think it's a brilliant movie. In fact, you realize this was something M. Night had planned for a long time. I mean, I even read he even said he wanted Kevin to be the guy David Dunn takes down his first night as a superhero. You know, the guy in the orange jacket that we saw in Unbreakable. Uh, he decided he couldn't do that because, you know, Kevin is such a complex character and you couldn't really get much out of him in a 15 minute climax. So he was like, well, I'll just uh, create Kevin for another movie, do a whole movie centered around him and have the two meet in the third movie. And you can definitely see his plan and vision when you see the two movies. And it makes me excited about seeing Glass. Might see it opening night, who knows, I can't wait. I don't think it's as good as Unbreakable though. Uh, some of the pacing's a little splotchy and they add in this psychiatrist character who hangs out with Kevin, this uh, really old lady psychiatrist. She does a good job. I have no problems with that actress. She definitely, you can definitely buy her as this character and you definitely have to give her credit for saying some dialogue that's hard to say in true Shyamalan fashion, but I do think most of her scenes feel like it's stretching the runtime quite a bit. Uh, there's a lot of scenes where she's talking about her position on uh, people with these disorders and it doesn't really go anywhere. I mean, she does a Skype session at one point and you're just like, uh, can we go back to Kevin and the main tension? This is just kind of dragging your movie and you're taking me out of it. When she's talking to Kevin, it's fine, but I don't think it was beneficial in the long run except for the character to give some exposition in a couple sequences. But other than that, uh, she kind of dragged me out of the movie. I think I'd love to see a fan edit online where they had it split uh, where that character is only used minimally. Like when the, the, when it's essential to the plot, except and not when she's like Skyping her psychologist friends about her 
theories on the disorders and yeah it 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 would be interesting it'll be interesting to see if that improves the movie or anything but other than that uh split is easily in nice return to form i hadn't seen the visit yet but a lot of people liked it but it Definitely didn't have near as much acclaim as Split. I mean, a lot of critics and audiences love this movie. I love this movie. It's an intense, pulse-pounding thriller based in Hitchcockian suspense. Easily one of his biggest influences, as you can see, between this movie and The Sixth Sense. And even some aspects of The Village. And even though it was mixed on signs, I mean, I love the first half of that movie. It really went under my skin. And... Like I said, it finally gave him like, the chance to create his Unbreakable Passion Project trilogy. And voila, Split was a, I think it was a bigger hit than Unbreakable. Unbreakable disappointed originally. But uh, because of the cult following, and they got the chance to continue uh, his journey. And now here we are with Glass, uh, which brings... Bruce Willis, Samuel L. Jackson, and James McAvoy together all in one movie. And I am so pumped to see how this trilogy ends. Even with the early mixed buzz it's getting, I'm hoping he delivers. And I don't know what to expect, because M. Night always makes unpredictable movies, whether good or bad. Split is one of his best movies. I think it's in my top three Shyamalan films, along with The Village and Unbreakable. So I'm going to give Split an 81 out of 100, the equivalent of 4.5 out of 5. I love this movie even more on a rewatch, especially being a bigger fan of Unbreakable now and picking all the pieces together. It's really awesome to see. So I hope you enjoyed my video on Split. Uh, please let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this movie. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you completely shocked by that twist? And if you were really shocked, did you think it improved the movie or made the movie dumber? Because it depends on who you are. We're all unique individuals, but you know, you can't please everybody. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button to see more content of mine, and click the little bell next to it to be notified of future videos. I got some more videos coming for you soon, including some more reviews of other not as well received in night films for the fun of it. Uh, if you've looked at some of my upcoming feet, move, movies I plan on doing on my letterbox page, I got, I got some interesting ones I'm going to do. Uh, I'll give you a hint. What? No! Hope you'll have an amazing day and I'll see you next time.